later on today. They are home. Huge news, and you know what? They didn't delay a minute in order to put it on prime time. They didn't say hold say on the tarmac. It's three in the morning. That's the way they rolled. The president and the vice president and their uh, wives were all there. Dana Lash is with us now to talk about that. Huge news overnight. Hi, yeah, Dana. Brian, huge news and good morning to all of you. Yeah, this is this is fantastic. I mean, this is this is the type of winning that I think people have been wanting to see in foreign policy for quite some time. And of course, the New York Times wasted no time in attacking the president. And I was talking about this yesterday. I, it feels as though the president could cure cancer and the legacy media could find something over which to attack him. Uh, but this is great. I mean, these are all of the lines previously drawn in, in, in the last administration, all of those being enforced. This is, I, I mean, we were all supposed to die from a nuclear attack because right. of Trump's mm -hmm. tweets, and now look what's happening. You, you mentioned uh, the New York Times headline. It was, at a key moment, Trump's top diplomat is again thousands of miles away. They were talking about the Secretary of State, who actually wasn't in Washington when the Iran deal was ripped up. Instead, he was in North Korea bringing home these three prisoners. It's pretty amazing. So they started that headline with at a key moment. There were several key moments that have happened yesterday and happened this morning and the day before. Yeah, I, this this was kind of silly for the New York Times to do, and I mean, for obviously, I think it kind of also underscored just how separate both of these negotiations are right now. But Mike Pompeo bringing back three Americans who have been held prisoner in North Korea—that's uh, pretty significant. And it seems that the New York Times at least needs to modify their article to note this instead of using this separation as some sort of cudgel to try to undermine the administration, because clearly Mike Pompeo. Was acting on behalf of the president. Um, this shows no separation from him or the president's agenda. It was a, it was a, it was a goofy headline for them to do. You know what? This is the same type of attack that we saw from the media when the president was trashing rightfully the Iran deal. This is while he's he knew for at least a year all of right. the evidence that Mossad had gathered from that civilian warehouse. I feel like a lot of stories need to be modified or retracted. And you know what, Dana? Just look at what the president and his new foreign policy team have been able to do in the last week. They ripped up the Iran deal, which, you know, it shouldn't be surprising because he said he was going to do it. He uh, went ahead and the American hostages were released from North Korea in a good faith issue uh, and gesture on, on the part of Kim Jong-un. And then on Monday, the U.S. Embassy is going to open in Jerusalem. A number of presidents have promised Israel, yep, when I'm president, I'm going to do it. They never did. He did it. Yep. And that's all in one week. Yeah, all in one week. Every previous president always kicked the can down the road where it concerned moving the embassy, and the president is accomplishing that on Monday. This is a huge, great week for foreign policy, and I think that it shows, you know, America's foreign policy. We, 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 we have an administration that has some strength. We have an administration that's going to follow through on what, on what it promises, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. We also have an administration that understands the mm -hmm. process of, of, of getting things done in our constitutional Republic. If you want a fist bump acknowledged as something more serious than a fist bump, take it through the Senate and get it ratified. We didn't yeah. see that with the previous administration. Uh, which, by the this way, is good. Who can be mad at this? Well, yeah. but by the way, just just watch. Um, there'll be redemption, no matter what this treaty, what this deal looks like. When it goes to Congress, the no Democrats are going to vote for it, so we might even be in in trouble with that uh, if things move forward at this pace. Yeah. Real quick, when it comes to uh, politics. The Democrats definitely have history on their side and a generic poll that's usually in their corner. However, the gap is narrowed considerably. In May, the Democrats have just a three-point lead. In February, it was 54 to 38. Uh, so how do you explain it? I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Nancy Pelosi says, I'll be your speaker, and they also say their agenda is we'll impeach the president. Yeah, and they also say that when they reclaim the House, they want to increase taxes, and all these Americans around the country are looking at their bigger paychecks thinking, we don't want any of that. Democrats have an enthusiasm problem, and they have a lack of leadership problem. I don't know how they can talk about a blue wave when they can't even drum up enthusiasm in their own primaries. Just in Texas, Republican turnout outnumbered that of Democrats. And what we saw in these past three previous primaries just the other day, the same thing, West Virginia, Ohio, and Indiana, we saw that Democrats lack the enthusiasm to 
to match the talk of turnout that they promised. So this is a real struggle for them. They're dealing, they're struggling with donations. They're struggling with messaging. They're all over the place. They're in the middle of a civil war because you have the Clintons and that, that faction trying to hang on to power. But really, it's Bernie's party now. It's turning into, I mean, socialist principles, a quasi-socialist party. That's what we're looking at. They have serious problems. I think those numbers might be closer now after the news we saw this morning. When you see those three individuals coming off the plane and coming home, that's Democrats, Republicans, everyone loves that. That's a good picture. Hey, Dana, thank you very much yeah, for joining will, us yeah, live. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you very of much, ma'am. Of course. Ma thank you. Good morning. I know what you're saying to yourself. I just saw Jillian do the news. We have to have her do it again. Um, so I apologize because I know that I'm taking away from your time, <laughs> right. Ryan. Absolutely. But I do want to get people at home <laughs> caught up on some of the other stories that we're following, starting with this. A suspect is under arrest, accused of brutally murdering a teenage girl with her mom listening on the phone. Police say Sean French violently attacked 15-year-old Bailey Bagshaw as she returned home from school in Utah. She was on the phone with her mother, who listened in horror before the phone went dead. Police say French had a previous relationship with the girl. He also has a felony warrant for unlawful sexual activity with a minor. Five of the most wanted ISIS leaders are now behind bars. According to the New York Times, the terror bosses were captured in a joint sting with U.S. and Iraqi forces. The three-month-long operation tracked the group hiding in Syria and Turkey. One of the terrorists is a top aide to ISIS leader al-Baghdadi. Illegal immigrants can now get college financial aid in New Jersey. Democratic Governor Phil Murphy signing a new bill to help dreamers go to a state school. To qualify, students must meet certain requirements, like have a diploma from a high school in the state. Undocumented students already get in-state tuition in New Jersey. A critic calls it fundamentally wrong for taxpayers. Let's look at your headlines. Send it back to you. Well, and as a New Jersey uh, homeowner and taxpayer, I am subsidizing that program. Mm. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you. Meanwhile, as you know, yesterday was Janice Dean's birthday, and today she's out on the streets with the folks. How are you guys? Are, do you want to be on television, by the way? Absolutely. Oh, good. Where are you from? Where are you from? Um, from Florida. And what's your names? Kathleen. Ken. Ken. Okay. Mike and Mary from Fondo.